polyclonal antibodies. To understand this term, we should know about the sequence of events that lead to production and synthesis of antibodies by the immune system. Let's have a quick overview of antibody production by B lymphocytes. We have studied earlier that origin and maturation of B cells occur in the bone marrow. Then these mature, naive B cells are released into the blood. They keep recirculating between lymph, blood and secondary lymphoid tissues. These B cells have specific receptors on their membrane for antigen recognition. These receptors are known as B cell receptors. Recall that B cell receptors are membrane bound immunoglobulins. Their structure is similar to that of antibodies. Every day, about 1 billion B cells are produced in our body. The B cell receptors present of these cells have pre existing specificities. Therefore, B cells are able to recognize and react to any possible antigen which it encounters. Each B cell can display about 1 lakh B cell receptors on its surface. Important point here is that all these B cell receptors are specific for or only one particular epitopon an antigen. When a mature B cell encounters an antigen, it gets activated and proliferate into a large clone of B cells. Some of them differentiate into antibody producing plasma cells and other become long-lived memory cells. Both these plasma cells and memory cells will be specific to the antigen or more specifically the epitope, which the mature B cell encountered initially. Now that we are clear how antibody production takes place, let's come to the topic of today's video lecture. Polyclonal antibodies Suppose this is an antigen which invaded the body. Let's say there is some bacterial infection. We know that microbial surface has many molecules that vary in their chemical nature. They may be proteins, carbohydrates, lipids. These microbial surface molecules or their portions are recognized by B cell receptors. These are the epitopes to which B cell receptor will bind. We also said that B cells of diverse specificities are circulating in our body. For our illustration, we will take four such B cells. Each of these B cells is specific for a single epitope on the antigen. So when there is an invasion by the antigens, these B cells recognize and bind to their specific epitopes and get activated. Each of these B cells will proliferate and produce large clone of cells. Some of these cells in each case will get differentiated into plasma cell. And each of these plasma cell will secrete antibodies specific to the epitope which triggered their differentiation. So, as a result for this antigen, our immune system produced four type of antibodies, each specific for a different epitope on the same antigen. Antibodies derived from multiple B cell clones are known as polyclonal antibodies. Polyclonal antibodies are heterogeneous mixture of antibodies, each recognizing a different epitope on the same antigen. We now understand that polyclonal antibodies arise from many B cell clones and have a heterogeneous collection of binding sites. Production of polyclonal antibodies in response to pathogens or antigens has a very important advantage in vivo. These antibodies offer multiple ways to attack a pathogen such as by facilitating phagocytosis, complement-mediated lysis, etc. Antibodies are a great tool in diagnostic immunology. This is because the antigen-antibody interaction is highly specific. An antibody can detect one antigen molecule among 10 to the power 8 other antigen molecules. Antibodies are used to locate and identify antigens, to purify, characterize and quantitate antigens. 
Polyclonal antibodies are useful in agglutination and immunoprecipitation based techniques. This is because these techniques involve large antigen antibody or immune complex formation. Polyclonal antibodies are efficient in this because they provide multiple ways of binding to the target antigens. Main source of polyclonal antibodies is human or animal blood. For polyclonal antibody production, an organism for example rabbit, is immunized with the antigen against which we need polyclonal antibodies. Rabbit is injected with the antigen. This is done one or more times. Rabbit's immune system will respond to these antigens by producing antibodies. After some time these antibodies are isolated and extracted from the rabbit's serum. This way we get antiserum containing polyclonal antibodies targeted against the desired antigen. But usage of polyclonal antibodies in diagnostic immunology has some disadvantages. For research and diagnostic usage we require antibodies in large quantity, but in a polyclonal mixture of antibodies, desired antibody is present in low concentration. The polyclonal antibodies may have cross-reactivities. This will reduce their sensitivity and specificity. Moreover, the isolation of desired antibody from a polyclonal mixture is expensive, time-consuming and less efficient. Alternative solution to this was provided by Georges Kohler and Caesar Milstein. They developed monoclonal antibodies. These antibodies are homogeneous and all recognize the same epitope. We will talk about monoclonal antibodies and their production in next video lecture.